Hello and welcome to this video tutorial for Crazy Talk Animator 2 on how to, use, how to do basic movements and how to adjust the camera settings and camera movements in your projects. So the first thing we need to do is make sure that we have a project. So here's my project with my, my forest and my characters which are already animated. Okay. So if I would like to move around in my scene, we go to the top toolbar here and you'll see that we have camera zoom we have camera pan, camera rotate, then we have home <clears throat> and 3D viewer. On the left side you'll also notice the camera record mode. So if you are first creating your scene and you're creating your, your character animations and your prop animations, you want to make sure that you're first in the preview mode and not in the camera record mode. So what's the difference? So for example if I switch this on you will immediately notice two things. You'll notice that there's a red button here in the camera icon. We also have record here. There's another thing. You see that the safe area frame color changed. This is now in red, which is letting you know that you're now recording any movement you do to the camera. So we're not going to do anything right now. We're going to go back to preview. I'm going to click on that and you'll see this changes to a little eye icon. So it's okay now to move things around. You won't set in any camera movements just yet. <clears throat> so the first one here is camera zoom. So I can click on this or I can tap the, the, the hotkey Z on my keyboard. And now I can zoom in by clicking on the left mouse button and dragging up or dragging down. I can also use the scroll wheel mouse button. can scroll up and I can scroll down. Now there's an another little trick I'd like to show you that this uh, little tip is often used in other of the Reillusion software that we have. If you are zooming in and out with the scroll wheel button, you might want to hold the shift key on your keyboard and this will magnify that effect. Okay. I think it's by 10x. So if I let that go and I zoom out, this is the, the speed. Okay, and if I hold shift, this is the speed. Okay, so it really comes in handy for when you're moving very quickly and you want to zoom in and out. Now, the other movement is for panning, camera pan. This is very simple. I can move to the left, to the right, I'm sorry, to the left of my project. I can move down or up. Okay. So let me adjust it right there. And then we have camera rotate. This is very handy for when you want to create a scene where you have your characters falling off the stage. Or when you're creating a project that's in the first person uh, perspective of a character. So this option comes in, it's very handy for the, these types of projects. Okay. So then we have home. Here we have reset, focus object, and focus all. If I click on reset, this will take me to the middle of that project, which in this case is this area here. Okay. If I go to focus all, this will take me all the way out where I can see the entire stage uh, inside Crazy Talk Animator 2. And we also have focus object, but notice that it's grayed out. This is because we haven't selected any particular object. So for example, if I double click on Emma here, now I have her selected, and I go on Focus Object, this will focus on sweet and lovely Emma right there. Okay, great. So the next part I'd like to show you is the 3D Viewer. So in Crazy Talk Animator, even though it's a 2D animation tool, you actually work in a 3D environment because it has a 3D engine. So if I go into 3D Viewer, you'll see that everything is arranged in layers. Okay? And this the distance between each object is what gives that 3D perspective, that 3D effect inside the projects. Okay? And I can rearrange them if I'd like to. So for example, if I grab onto this rock, okay, hold up. Let me zoom in a bit. Zoom, not grab. Okay, hold up, hold up. Let me turn this off. Select outside. Zoom back in. Okay, here we go. So 
I'm going to move to the side. If I grab this rock, you see that the, the gizmo turns up, the X, Y, and the Z gizmo. So the Z gizmo is, has a blue arrow, so I can drag this and move it forward. Or I can move it towards the background and hide it in the bushes. Okay, now there's two ways to do this. I can do it here with my mouse. Or if I turn off the 3D viewer and I zoom in, let me select that rock again. You'll see that at the bottom there's a little icon and if I hover my mouse over it, my mouse cursor changes. So now if I click and drag downwards, I will move that rock towards the foreground or I can push it back towards the background. So I can do it either way. Preferably, I prefer to use the 3D viewer. That way I can adjust that distance. Okay, I don't want that rock to be between um, Saul and Emma. I want it I want it to be between the fire, the campfire, and them. Okay? And if I click outside, I stop selecting it. Also, for those of you who like to play with values, um, I can use the upper toolbar here, the upper tool set, with the values for the, the z-axis, for example. So if I move the rock forward, you can see that the value changes. Or I can move this backwards. Okay? Or I can simply drop in a value, and that'll work like just like that. Now, another cool thing with Crazy Talk Animator 2, actually one of the new features, is that now I could play my project while in the 3D viewer. Okay? And you can see them moving about. I can space bar and I can have them move around. Now, this is especially useful for when I have uh, complicated projects with a lot of camera movements. So let me open a new project here, a very lovely project, a default project that comes with Crazy Talk Animator 2. Now this project looks a bit complex. Um, it has camera movements, it has prop movements, and you'll see what I mean. Um, let me play this back here. You see that it looks like they're turning around and dancing. Now this is a lovely project which I love to watch every time but it's actually a very simple project to do this is nothing more than camera movements and prop and layer movements so if I go into the 3D viewer okay, and I pick a nice angle let me zoom out and I play this back you can now see what is really happening behind the scenes so we have these props moving about these, the props are also being uh, scaled at the same time and a camera movement is added to this particular project and that's what I'm gonna show you how to create your own camera movement so remember at the beginning I mentioned that if you're just rearranging your projects and doing character animations and prop animations you want to be you want to stay in the camera preview up here just like we're watching here this little grayed out icon okay now if I open the timeline and we're in project and I click on camera you'll see that we have a keyframe there this is uh, a default keyframe that represents this perspective and this distance with the camera okay so for example if I turn this on okay now we have the record option the safe area frame is uh, turned to red we have the little record option there. So let's say I want to go to reset. I like I like this this view. Let me zoom in a bit where we were looking at the moon. Okay. And now I want to move the timeline forward and I'm going to move the camera. What will this do? It'll when I move the timeline forward like so like I'm uh, moving the time scrub, let's say to frame 135 right about there and I also start moving once I move the time frame forward and then I move my my camera you'll see that a keyframe will automatically be set in there okay so let me zoom out you see that keyframe was already set in let me zoom out zoom out let me pan until I reach that distance and that angle which I want people to see in my scene right there okay and you can see that that keyframe was automatically added and if I move this time scroll back 
you'll see that we'll go to that initial keyframe. So let's close that timeline so we can see things better. Let's play back. Camera movement is being added. Project is animated. And right there. And you will see that scene. Okay. Now there's another little uh, thing I'd like to show you, which is F11. This is for uh, full screen, full screen viewer. So if I press space bar, we activate the project, and we can see that camera movement and the project being animated. Space bar to stop that, and escape to go back to the main stage window. Pretty easy, huh? Great. So let me go back to preview here, preview mode. That way I can move things around. And I can move and pan my camera, and I will not drop in any keyframes by accident. So again, remember, when you have, when you're simply setting up your stage and doing your character animations and your prop animation, you want to be in, the, you want to be in the preview mode. Once you're ready, and when you want to start recording your own camera movements, turn that on. Okay, because the last thing you want to be doing is set auto, uh, accidentally setting in keyframes during that camera record mode. The last part I'd like to show you is in project settings. So I'm going to go into project settings here and I'm going to go into camera settings. We have perspective and we have orthographic. Now um, right now we're in perspective which means that the distance that we have between each element, each character and everything, that distance will give us a 3D effect. Now if I go into orthographic and I turn this on you can see that the whole scene has been flattened out. And if I zoom in, or zoom out, hold up, zoomed in too much. If I zoom out, you can see that we don't see a pronounced 3D effect. Okay, So this is what happens with orthographic. Now, if I go back and I choose perspective, okay, by default we have a lens aperture of 155. So if I drop this to, let's say, 35 and I click on OK, you'll see that the distance between each element is very pronounced. Okay, you can see that right there. I can zoom out. So again, this is because of the value of the aperture that I, that I chose. If I go back and I increase this to, say, let's say, 200, the value of that distance, that 3D effect, will drop. Okay, it'll look a bit more like orthographic, but not quite as flattened. So then you can play around with whatever um, aperture uh, works for you. Okay, great. So that's it for this tutorial. We hope uh, you can use a lot of these tips in your future animations. So yeah, thank you very much and stick around for the next tutorials. Have a good day.